Welcome to the game, everybody. So, uh, who would like to tell our, well, our viewers where, uh, where about we're at? Well, um, <clears throat> so last session we got into a fight with, uh, these minotaurs and, um, we ended up, uh, sparing one of them to help us. And, uh, we, after that, we made it look like the other minotaurs were in fights with the barkeeper. Um, hopefully so that nobody down there understands that it was us. Um, <clears throat> then we went over to this pet shop guy who is a Harper spy. Uh, and we've been talking about exotic pets. Snow is trying to get a sugar glider. The guy thinks he can. It just might take a couple days. Uh, and then I had just asked about the elithids. And uh, then it all went dark. Aye. And the session ended. Excellent, excellent. And I still have no idea where the fuck this thing is. Ha <laughs> Top right. Of top right-ish. No, no, or I'm talking about where the elephant right. is. <laughs> oh, understood. Okay, sorry. I thought you were talking about where we are, and it's actually bottom right, but anyway. Uh, I was like I was like, it's a, it is a large map, so it is a very, very large map. Alright, um <clears throat> so uh, would you care to ask your question again so that I can, uh, can give you some information? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, just to clarify, we just finished clearing up that I was looking for the Elithid because of the killings, not because of wanting one for my own. Um, so, uh, do you happen to have any ideas or have you heard any rumors about where one of these things might reside. Hmm. He thinks for a moment. Oh, hold on. I think I might actually know. Yeah, it's all good. If you need to take a minute to figure out where, where it is or where you want to put it, that's totally fine. Suddenly, the elephant bursts in. That's right. <laughs> Roll your initiatives. Oh, God. Huh. No. That's super cool. I'm actually going through all the handouts for Mind Flayer Illithid, because it would be highlighted, so I can just open the stat block straight from there, and there is not one here. So, I guess I'm just going to make it the fuck up. So, uh, he thinks for a moment. And he says, well, I'm not overly certain, um... There's, if he's doing the killing here, he must be on another level. He wouldn't stay close to the murders. You might want to check out the middle or the upper floor of Skullport. I have heard uh, whispers of the murders and uh, possible uh, mind flare in the area. But nobody seems to have actually witnessed the killings. Which leads me to one of two things. Either this creature is 
altering his appearance. Blend in. Or it may not even be a mind flare at all, but rather something trying to make it look like a mind flare doing the killings. <clears throat> Interesting. Okay, so I guess there's there's two potential possibilities. So if it is indeed a mind flare, <clears throat> Would you believe it would be somewhere more remote in one of the levels? Or does it not care about being out out nearby folks? Honestly, I'm not 100% sure. Um, there might be someone who could help you, however. Uh, hmm... Maybe Felrax can help you. He's uh, the Dragonborn up on the uh, upper level of Skullport. He he resides in Dalagor's old fortress. He may know more. Thank you. That is very helpful. And what be, would be the quickest way to get to him from where we are now? Uh, sorry, um, sorry, sorry. What was his name again? Uh, Felrax. F-E-L-R-A-X. A uh, copper dragonborn. Ooh, that's our first copper dragonborn, isn't it? I mean, other than Spoonbreaker. Yeah, I mean, I mean, in this game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Spoonbreaker might not be a copper dragonborn for long. Oh, damn. That's right. <laughs> um, He's going to say, well, if you go out of this shop, uh, take a right, followed by another right, and it is just over in that direction. Um, the Minotaur, whose name I cannot remember. Anybody got a name for him? Burn the fuck out of my head, God. Uh, I do not remember his name, but Snow is taking a peek right now. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, somebody took down the name last week. Or last session. Well, he, he's going to say, take them. I will show them the stairs. Oh, uh, are you sure? I, I know your kind are not exactly welcome. If I'm a Sherpa, I'm sure I'll be fine. Very well. I didn't write his name down. I don't know if Mads did or not, but... I know somebody asked for spelling, so if it wasn't you, it was probably uh, Madison. Probably was, because I didn't get it either. I'm sorry. No worries, no worries. No big deal. He's just going to be the Minotaur for today. <laughs> William. We'll call him William. William. William the Minotaur. Um. And then when he does something, you can yell, William! Nerd. <laughs> Best movie ever. Um, but yeah, he, he's uh, the Minotaur will show you the way. And uh, I believe I should be able to acquire those um, exotic pets uh, within a few days. I will send word that uh, I'm looking for something, and I'm sure. Someone on the surface can find it for me. Wonderful, wonderful. And like, Ray will just like rub her hands together because they're like, she's so excited for this little pickles. Pickles. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> I forgot you're going to call it pickles. Okay, so. It says, well, if there's nothing else, uh, I should be uh, getting along on this, on, on your current orders. And I wish you well in finding this creature committing the murders. Oh, we're in the shop. What's the shopkeeper's name? Oh, El damn. Elvira Snowbanes. Yep. Oh, he has one. Elvira what? <laughs> Snowbanes. I'll put it in chat. Got it. Thank you. No problem. Um, Zin will bow at the man, thank him for his time, and then slip him five gold for his troubles. Oh. Me too, me too, me too. Oh, oh my, this is... I will, tr I will try to put a rush on this order. Such good customers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome very much. The the Minotaur kind of um, ducks get out the door, and he just kind of like starts walking off the uh, direction. Uh, then uh, yeah, do you want you, you want a controller? To... Sure, I can. I don't know if you wanted just to move us with the Minotaur. Since yeah, I probably will. Us. I thought that might be easier. Because <clears throat> we're just going to follow, you know. Yes, it uh, it only takes a couple minutes. And he says, behind rock. Stairs. And you see, uh, it seems like uh, there's some, they're about 10 feet wide. Um they go up at a, a rather steep incline. However, there's a they also seem to turn around corners and it's uh, not really spiral. It's more of a rectangle but you know, there's landings. Uh, as you guys ascend quite quickly as this Minotaur is taking steps two at a time. He's a big boy. Let's see, where do you come up? Ray's like a little kid trying to keep up with an adult. <laughs> they're like half running <laughs> like starts to walk falls behind runs a few steps yeah hey so he told you Bellarac on the third floor so I'm guessing you guys aren't stop uh aren't stopping at the second floor, you're just going straight to the top? Yeah, we'll go straight to the top. All right. The guy gave us some good information, but I think Zin wants to know more before he starts trying to hunt the thing, you know? Fair enough. Huh. Okay. Well, then that means we need to... Um... I this actually... Oh, holy shit. Okay. Oh, I'm just trying to figure out what everything on this map is real quick. You're good.
Very confusing, I must say. This water or rock? Oh, this is wild. All right. <clears throat> I'll bring you guys in. All right, so you all descend these stairs. Uh, you can bring out uh, you cannot in. Okay, I'm just sorry. Ah, oh, there we are. I was just I had to scroll way out so I could figure out where we are. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, all these maps are we absolutely enormous. Yeah. So, oh. oh, I put her inside a wall. you uh have ascended these stairs Benatar gets to the top and he looks left and right almost like he's checking to make sure nobody's paying attention nobody as in us no uh make sure nobody sees him like like the other guy said like you no know. yeah he's trying to remain in inconspicuous yes does uh I think we have a mask for that, maybe. No, that mask doesn't exist anymore, and we shall we burn it as soon as we could. <laughs> we don't need a minotaur shark. No, the when remember when you made me a pretty pretty lady elf? Oh, that Yo, was just me. I just got his kit. That was just you want to be a lady kit. elf, sir? You want to be a lady elf? I'm fine. It's a lot of fun. I do not need to be the weaker sex. Whoa. Ray just like Roll. stabs him a little bit. Roll initiative. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, it's Minotaur. It's not me. It's the Minotaur. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah. Uh. He says. If we are trying to get to uh, Balagar's fortress, we will need to uh, get to the other side of the town. Up here, uh, you do notice that it does seem to be a little more bustling with people. Um, but nobody seems to be paying any mind, uh, at least at the moment, to the Minotaur. There are plenty of people up here going about their daily business. He begins lead to on. lead you down uh, across. Actually, I'm going to have to get everybody to drag yourselves along because I trying to keep everybody on this path is going to be impossible. Yep, that's fair starts leading um you see as you walk across uh these what seem to be wooden 
pathways. That there is uh, the the rock underneath is extremely unworked. It's it's not looking much like you would. You, it's not looking like what you've seen throughout the rest of the uh, of Skullport. What is this building? Ooh. Okay. Um, as you get to here, uh, he continues down. However. Ray, you notice a sign above this door. Does it say no cats allowed? It says night shades caress. On this, uh, <clears throat> on this sign, you see what looks to be uh, some herbs that you have seen before, and a mortar and pestle. Ray just like jabs. Zin in the side and like starts frantically pointing at the side and be like, we need to go in there right now. Um, Zin will call up to the Minotaur, whatever his name is. I know we haven't decided. William. Um, his name is William. Oh, yeah. William. No. no. William. Uh, can we can we take a moment and, and uh, pop into this store? Mm. We'll be quick. He looks at Red. Being as uh, it was Ren's, uh, Ren is the one he's got to deal with to do what she says, and Ren nods. Damn yeah, right, she nods. Very well. As you guys open the door, uh, ah, there it is. Standing inside. On the other side of a counter is a strange creature. <clears throat> hey, Valoran, would you like mm -hmm. to give me a history or arcana at advantage? I'd love to. It's a mummy. He slowly turns oh around. Welcome to my shop. What may I help you with today? Um, hi. Hi. Um, do you have any of these mushrooms? And then Ray will describe what the bioluminescent mushrooms look like. I mean, you have some, don't you? Oh, yeah, so I will show him. You're way too hot. Hmm. I have a few. Uh, he goes over to a shelf at the side of the room, and he opens a small box. Ah. Irritants. He brings it back over, places the box on the um on the counter. Jesus, man, my brain is not working today. Inside the box is a cloth, and he he kind of unfolds the cloth, and uh, you can see that he has about uh, twelve of these mushrooms. How much are these? How much have they normally been when you bought them? They were like uh, gold a piece or something, right? I think it was um, one gold for two. <clears throat> well, these take a while to grow. 
but I do grow them myself. Oh, sorry. It was 12 mushrooms for one gold piece. Are you sure? That doesn't sound right. That's what I have written down. Luminous, luminant mushrooms, 12 mushrooms equals one gold. All right. Give these to you for... Seven silver and five copper. Deal. He reaches out a very uh, dirty wrapped hand to you. Um, you can see that uh, most of the body is still wrapped in you know his mummy wrappings. However. What is showing of skin is tough and withered. Black in some spots, while gray in others. Okay, Ray will just like reach out and like just <laughs> gently shake his hand. Um, is that what he was doing? Is offering a handshake? Or is he putting his hand out for the money? As you take his hand and shake it, uh, yes, this, this is nice. Uh, I, I am Nightshade, by the way. I will introduce myself and also the group. It is nice to see fresh faces here. We don't see many of those these days. Uh, but he puts his hand out again. Uh, Ray. Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, no, you go. No, after you. Jesus Christ, somebody go. Is his hand pointing at anybody in particular? Um, no. He's He's got his palm up. Like he's waiting for something. <laughs> got it. Ray will just drop the money in his palm and give him a little curtsy. That is better. Thank you. Um, he takes the uh, the cloth and holds it back over the mushrooms and pulls the bundle out and for you. Is there anything else that I can help? Or is there anything else that I can do for you today? We we have much here. There's, of course, four or thirty-four. Ah, here it is. Uh, this is, uh, of course, in a pot the carry shop but I have all sorts of things herbs elixirs vials of almost anything you could ever need does he have any swamp or water ingredients I may have some of those. Give me a moment. Uh, he'll kind of go through the same process. Uh, he, he does find about uh, six of each. Uh, this is what I can sell. Uh, I do need the rest of what I have. Of course, for... <clears throat> excuse me. Of course, for creating the tinctures and elixirs potions and poison I need and as he says poisons you can see that his eyes drift over to Zin and he raises an eyebrow Zin just chuckles that's th that's not really my style but thank you hmm really 
thought that that was the style of all drow. Ah, I'm only half. And Ray will put her hand on her shoulder, on her hip, and be like, "Yeah, he's nice." <laughs> Zen will chuckle again. Well, you never know when something of that sort will come in handy. But uh, I do have some other potions and things that are not poisonous. Have any interest? He just went to the washroom in the middle of a conversation. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> them green apple squirts must be hitting hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Ray, uh, he will say that uh, you'll give two gold for each of the uh, each ingredient that you were asking for for the swamp and the uh, and the other one and he's got six of each two gold a piece yep ooh that's expensive for my blood well you're, you're in the, at the other place yeah they they were but uh, he, he also uses them to make stuff and it's not exactly easy to get down here and to top it off, uh, I mean, having a undead mummy wandering, you know, on top side, probably not the uh, not going to be easy for him to get what he wants. What do you mean? That's totally normal. Oh, he's back. Yeah, I can hear the whole thing. I just, <laughs> wireless. I just thought you were gonna ask. Uh, you're gonna move on to Ray right away after that, but uh, that's my bad. All gravy, but he does be better. He does offer the rest of the group uh, a take a look around the shop and see if uh, they find anything that interests. Okay. What type of potions do we find? Uh, you find all different kinds of healing potions. Uh, you find uh, restorative potions of different kinds. Uh, you also find... One second... You find a vial that you've seen before. At least I believe you have. Inside the ingredient or the uh, <clears throat> excuse me contents seem to be moving very quickly. Looks a lot like mercury or quicksilver. You would know this to be a potion of. Ooh. Z uh, Zen will kind of look at it. We'll ask, uh, how much for this one? Ah, uh, those are rare, and the ingredients are quite costly. Give me one sec, I gotta look up something. Yep, not a problem. Uh, well. I can let this go for 600 gold. Which you guys are aware that that is a market price. Most yeah. of the speed are not, uh, not easy to find, not easy to make. And that is that is roughly the normal price. Yeah. Then nods. Hmm. Seems to be a fair price, but uh, I don't know if I have quite that much to spare right now, unfortunately. Um, well, what class... do you have? Uh... Oh, he's asking how much I have to, to pay for this, basically? Mm-hmm. Oh, um, I could probably spare 
400 gold, unfortunately. Persuasion at disadvantage. <sighs> yeah, that's okay. It's actually not bad. I'm surprised. I'll tell you what. I will give it to you for 400 on one condition. Your What's friends. The catch? You or your friend must spend extra money. Make up for what I lost. What I lose in this deep. Meaning if you guys were to uh, spend 200 gold on other potions, you'd be willing to uh, let it go. Or 400. Okay. That seems very fair. Zin nods. Uh, he'll... Sorry, he's going to look over to the party and ask if they need anything. Two questions, two quotes if I could. One, portions of healing, and two, portion of invisibility. I see. Uh, I mean, which strength of healing potion? Like, we also have potions of vitality and heroism. We have, we have all kinds of potions, but what strength of healing potion? Just regular healing. Nothing fancy. Well. Uh, he walks over to another shelf. And he pulls another small chest up. And brings it back over to the counter and sets it down. He opens the lid. And you see in there that there are... <clears throat> excuse me. Several vials. Uh, these are rather small vials filled with a red liquid. He pulls one out. 100 gold, or sorry, 200 gold for a potion of healing. And how much for invisibility? Uh, he pulls another chest off the shelf and places that on the, the counter. 400 or a potion of invisibility. I'll take a single portion of healing, please. Very well. He pulls one out, and he puts his hand out for the money. I'll give him the money, 20 uh, platinum. I think that's the right conversion, or is it 40? Uh, no, that's, that's correct. Uh, okay. 10 gold is one platinum. <laughs> Got it. Pleasure doing business. Is there anything else I have? Some rather interesting one. I have potions of resistance. You all look like you do battle quite often. What types of resistance? What are you after? Hmm. Is there any sort of potion to resist? Uh, sorry, player to DM. Is something like sleeping poison counted as poison, or is that a separate category? Uh, so sleeping poison would be drow poison. It is. Yeah. He he has he has those. Yeah, like potions of resistance to that stuff. Okay. Uh, yeah, like I don't know, like is, if a potion potion of resistance to poison does that count for like drow poison, sleeping poison, paralysis? Like you know what I mean? I believe resistance. It usually just halves the damage. Uh, I don't. Uh, think okay, so it doesn't like give you advantage on checks to like pass those things. Now I'm looking at it right now. When you drink this potion, you gain resistance to poison damage for one hour. 
potion of poison resistance. Yeah, so damage. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, that's fine, then. Sad face. Um, you know, I, I have heard there's an creature lurking around uses powers of the mind to subdue opponents. Maybe a ocean of ocean of psychic results. Hmm? Hmm. Interesting. I didn't know they made those. How much uh, would a potion be of that? 500 gold. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> yeah, potions are not cheap. Yeah, that's fair. Sorry, can you give me a minute? I gotta do something with this coffee. Oh my god, I'm so excited for pickles. You don't even know. I keep telling him how excited you are so you can really want to murder pickles. Yeah, I think this is like buying a house. You never tell him how much you love it. No, I have yep. a plan. Sorry about that, I am back. Coffee's still hot as fuck, but at least it's not tasting like shit. Add more cream. Uh, I should, but I'm already back. So, so, what do you think? Ocean of psychic resistance? That would be quite handy. Unfortunately, if I buy the potion of speed, I will not have enough money for this potion of psychic resistance. We're poor. Zin's a bit broke right now. <laughs> well, how about the rest of you? Um, no, thank you very much. Um, wait, is... Sorry, I'm pretty sure Maddie's character is the only thing she's not resistant to is psychic, right? Mm-hmm. Fuck. I don't want to make a call without her, but I think she might actually yeah, make that. I'll I'll buy it for her. It's cool. I, I think she would be okay if you bought it, honest to God. I think she would be fine. Because like that, like if I'm if I'm a barbarian and I have resistance to everything but psychic, I might want resistance to psychic for a day. Because I don't think that she ever wants to replace her weapon because it's like her dad. So I think she's just going to upgrade that sort of a thing. So I think she would be fine if you spent it. Do you want me to message her and ask? Uh, well, I mean, if Val's okay buying it for now, we can always ask her later and they can money swap. I'm okay buying it. I'm I'm not keen on losing my head again. It's cool. <laughs> okay, fair, fair. I'm also not keen on you losing your head again. I'll give the gentleman the money. Very well. And with that, I will now sell you the potion of speed. Hundred. Very nice. And Zin will. Uh... Start handing him with that 400 gold for it. Mad said, go for it. Okay, Maddie will buy it then. I'll uh, adjust her money accordingly. Okie dokie.
there anything else that has caught your eye? Um, no, thank you. But Ray will, like, dig around in her bag and, like, pull out one of her not-so-good sculptures, but she thinks it's amazing, and give it to him as a gift. Fix it up. I don't understand. I made it. It's a gift. For you. Oh. Thank you. He says. Um, you can give me an insight. As uh, he kind of examines it, you could definitely see that he is still confused. Undead things usually aren't gifted things. They're usually, uh, usually more expectant of uh, fear from people than gifts. But he places it up on a shelf behind the think it will look good there. Agreed. Ray's like a famous artist now, guys. Nice. Well, I do hope that we'll come back again. It's been a pleasure. Thank you! Zin bows and says, thank you very much. I'm sure we will be back soon. Based on our luck, that's not a off chance bet. Right? As you guys start to head out, uh, you see him kind of like stand in place and just kind of lower his head. He seems to not be moving at all. I mean, he's undead, so he definitely doesn't breathe, but almost kind of like a, seems like a standby almost. But you guys. Right. As you guys uh, walk out the door, right up behind you. As we shut the door behind us, I'm going to say to the party, I'm surprised to see a mummy selling things uh, anywhere, frankly. Yes, that is a new experience for me, at least. <laughs> so, one for the books. Rach is like so excited that her art is like everywhere now. She's like a Picasso. Picasso, huh? Right on. Yeah. <clears throat> Minotaur he continues to lead you uh, through the crowded uh, crossings. You, you see uh, people are starting to notice him now. And Uh, there are several whispers, but there's also people moving out of his way, kind of like uh, giving him a wide berth. As he leads you here... Um, oh, Ray just thinks it's because she's famous. Damn, nice. Ray. <laughs> uh, I'm going to drag you guys over because... Uh, Sounds good. I think... I think this is supposed to be a, like a rock wall. Or like... Maybe a pathway that goes over top of the uh, area. I'm not really sure what this is, but gotcha. it looks like because it overhangs a lot of the buildings, I think it's supposed to be like you know, just a big like you're pathway. walking underneath yeah, buildings yeah. or a tunnel type thing. Yeah, yeah. Right now, which so from here, he then heads south again.
Y'all coming? Yep. Sorry, I lost him for a second. <clears throat> to the yeah i'm finding that i just have to drag them around the corner to see which way he went and it's fine yeah the lighting does adjust as you move them even if you're holding it which is nice um as you guys pass this building here This is okay. This building here is shaped like an upside down spider. The legs of this spider um, forming great spires that rise high into the cavern sky. Zen, you can give me a, I'm going to say a history advantage. Damn. Huh. It's I can use my lucky coin to get a plus one. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. All right. Um, I'm going to give it to you, though. Uh. It seems like this is something that your mother has told you about. Your heritage, your culture of your father's side. This looks like a drow building by the description she had once given you. Interesting. Okay, Zinn's going to make a mental note of this, but he's not going to go right now. He's unsure how that's going to go. seems to pause here. And he points at the building. Allegor. That was the place, right? Mm -hmm. Or no? Yes. And he moves okay. to the side, waiting. So that's this place right here. Indeed. Uh, it, okay. This kind of looks like uh, a small um, front gateway. Is it closed or open? Oh, it's closed. Okay. Is there a bell anywhere? There is. Uh -huh. Right to the side of the door. I'll bring out and give the bell a hearty shake. You hear a voice um, from above you. And as you guys look up, you can see that this place is uh, two stories tall. And there seems to be a balcony. Standing upon the balcony is a dragonborn. Copper in color and... Wearing what looks to be uh, a set of wizard robes. Yes. Who are you? Hi. Uh, hi. Ray, Ray will just yell her name like probably louder than needed. 
and then ask, are you Felrax? Like really loud. I am. So again, I ask, who are you? Um, my, my name is Zin Du Erden, and uh, we uh, we were speaking to, I'm going to butcher this, Alara? Or Luria? Olvira? Olvira? Olvira. Yeah. Olvira. Okay, Olvira. Um, <laughs> and uh, they mentioned that you might be uh, able to help us out. We're looking for some information on something. Hold on. This place is very confusing. Ah, I see. Okay. You, come, you hear um, heavy footsteps coming to the door. Enter. As he moves to the side. Oh, that's him? It is. Oh, it looks like an imp. It's, uh, I think it's actually supposed to be a tiefling, but that is just the generic, um... Uh, Token? Yeah, for, uh, for a mage. Ah, that's fine. I was just, con I was like, is this his servant? Or... The Minotaur walks in. And Felrax backs up. Not suddenly. As you all seem to keep strange company as he looks at the Minotaur. We like to mix it up. You guys see a uh, a mage hand shut the door. Hmm. I see. Well. What is it you all need help with, exactly? Well, you see, we, we've been in invest, investigating these uh, sudden deaths uh, in Skullport. Um, and we, you know, we're led to believe that it may be something, some sort of creature or something to pretend to be this creature. And in talks, uh, mind flares or elithids have been mentioned several times. I see. And why does he think that I can help? Because of your great intelligence system. If you think flattery will get you anywhere, hate to be the bearer of bad news. Is it not true? Chuckle. I am known to be one of the greater wizards in the area. I suppose. Fine. Follow me, he says, and he, uh, he motions to a table in the corner here. And he sits down. The Minotaur, unfortunately, not being able to uh, find a seat for his size, stands leaning against the wall with his arms crossed. There you go. Everybody's yeah, got no, a seat. We're, we're playing. <laughs> we're playing. <laughs> no, yeah. Oh, no, after you. No, oh, after you. Um, does so. And what have you garnered so far about this creature you are looking for? Well, so far, we've seen some of the stereotypical signs of an elithid, you know, the corpses not having brains in them and so forth. 
um, markings of such. But uh, in talks with the with uh, El or Elvira, uh, they mentioned that it could also potentially be someone trying to impersonate an Illithid or a Mind Flayer as well. We did note that there was killings on the first floor and uh, Ov- Ovira mentioned to us that they did, if it was an Illithid, they don't believe it would be on the same floor as where a lot of the killings are happening. So, and... Oh, and one more thing. We, we are noticing that the killings tend to be of people that might have owed something to the one of the guilds in town. Perhaps the Xanathar guild? Huh. A group of thugs. Oh, what a shame. Kids these days. That fish is... That fish is quite a pain in most people's backsides. Sorry, player to DM. Fish. Do I know that 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 what that is in reference to? One sec. I just want to make sure I'm not about to uh, say something wrong. That's fine. Because if I don't know, my character will ask. But if I do know, I don't want to be, you know. Uh, he did not say fish. He said beholder. That beholder okay. is uh, then... <clears throat> pain in everybody's backside. Zen nods. I'm I'm finding this one out the hard way. It seems. Well, they say that most beholders are insane. They do come from the realm of madness. Same place, Illithids are originally from. It would make sense that the the beholder has employed a illithid. Well, you do understand, I hope, that if you are to kill this, you are declaring war upon the Xanathar guild as a whole. Uh, necessarily a bad thing given what they've done to the community admittedly there are consequences to it though well this port the city has traded hands of the powerful for centuries first it's a pirate port and then it's a then a warlord overtakes it and a guild takes it. Doesn't matter who's truly in power. Me living in here is quite often a death sentence of its own. And yet you stayed. I have business dealings here. All network of wizards and mages. Interesting. Say Elvira sent you here. Indeed. Yes. Yet I see no insignia. On any of your foes. You are not of the Harpers, then? No, no, we are not, but we, um, we are kind of assisting them at this time, which is 
partly why we are uh, looking at the Silithid and perhaps the Xanathar Guild in itself. Let's see. You know what? I just had an idea. Okay, it's not there. All right. Um Well, I don't know more how much help I can offer, but he slides a key across the table. I will do some investigating on my own and see if I can figure out where this creature is. In the meantime, if Elvira says that you are good people, you may use this place as a sanctuary. Not safe in the hotels or sorry the taverns and such unfortunately especially if uh, word gets around that you are looking for an employee of the Xanathar guild give me a uh, uh, a moment I, I'll be back and you see him just kind of like Pass through this wall right here. All right. I'm gonna reach out, gently touch the wall. I'm just curious if it's an illusion or not. As you touch the wall, you shit yourself. <laughs> no, no. Um, you urinate in his home. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> no. You, uh, as you touch the wall, your hand passes. Okay, I'll just keep that knowledge to myself. Sit back down. Uh, let's see. What is the spell I'm looking for? After a few minutes, he passes back through the wall. He takes a seat. Now, unfortunately, you do not know the creature's name, I'm guessing. No. Yes, that is correct. Let's see. Well... He slides a monocle across the table. You're looking for him, and he is disguised himself through magical means. This will help you. Valoran, you're the only one who would possibly know what this is. You can give me an Arcana. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
but I'll identify it when we get clearer of him. He's just going to tell you. That works too. Use this. Wear it. And this is something I do require back. Of course. You will be able to see his true form when you look upon him. This is a monocle of true sight. Seems like it might be best used by our most perceptive in the party. That's using. I mean, not trying to railroad you, but no, that's, no. I Zin will graciously take it. Uh, put the monocle on, looking all uh, all uh, fine now. High class uptown. Yeah, high class uptown. <clears throat> so, as I put this monocle on, do I notice any significantly different? Yes, you do. You put it on, and you look at Falrax. You see that he's actually a black dragon bull. I was going to say, he's the elithid the whole time. Right. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, that would be a good twist, though, that the monocle's cursed. Um, much like, uh, you know what, uh, I'm going to say, Zin, since you're the only one that notices at the moment, you, sir, can give me a... Let's go with. I feel like it's nature. Oh, wow. sorry, not advantage. Does not matter. Yeah, I'll take. I'll take the nat twenty. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know that more often than not, um, a dragonborn's color and their the way they act is often the same as that color's dragon. Now, black dragons are evil. And yet, you have not got any kind of um, bad feelings off of this one. Yeah, Zen is no stranger to being judged based off of his appearance. So he's just gonna smile, give the and be like, "I see we all have our secrets," and give the dragon a, a wink, and then say nothing else. He he smiles. No, oh, you know what it does then now. I I think I catch your drift. Seems that you also know what it is like to be judged. Yes, once or twice. My appearance has gotten me into some interesting situations already. Well, I can imagine. So, I would definitely ask that, of course, you do not divulge my identity to anyone. No, of, of course not. I would never. I would never. Your secret is safe with me. Well, fortunately, that is about the amount of help that I can offer you right now. Actually, I had two more points if I could bring them up and see if maybe you can assist us with those. I will see maybe. what I can do. Please. Any kind of gestures for you to go in. First off, do you sell scrolls? I do not. Uh, I am... As I'm sure you are aware, I am a... part of the Harpers, as he taps the insignia on his uh, ropes. I do not uh, really sell anything, unfortunately. Although, depending what you're looking for, I might be able to offer a hand. Well, that does conveniently bring us to the next topic. How might one join such an organization as the Harpers? Hmm. You're looking to join, are you? 
I would, yes. And your name is... I don't think we've actually exchanged names. We haven't. Valorant, pleased to meet you. And you, Dark Elf. I am uh, Zin Du Erden. Huh. Well, your last name is quite well known. I, uh, I have been told this. Uh, a couple times before. And the two of you, gesturing to Ray and Ren. Um, I think I introduced myself outside when I was yelling. Yes, that is correct. I did. And I'm assuming Ren would just give her name. Yeah, she'll just introduce herself. Yeah. Of course. Well... Are you all looking to join, or just you, T? I can only speak to myself, but I defer to the party. Um, I am happy to help, but I don't know if I want to be committed to something like that. Just yet. I have my own goals to attend to. He has commitment issues. <laughs> Damn. Wow. Just out him like that. For real, though. Shit. Well, I must first ask why you wish to join the Harpers, Valoran. It's a chaotic and troubled world. My understanding is they're committed to good. I'd like to commit myself to something, and I understand that more people working together towards a common goal is more efficient. You guys can hear the Minotaur um, audibly snort. Kind of shake his head. And yet a good person felled you, my friend. Excuse me, good half work. He eyes you at that comment, but remains silent. The, uh, the Dragonborn at the table says hmm ah so it's a life debt then that makes sense or make strange bedfellows true who's in your bed <laughs> nobody yet I'm sure we'll get to that later uh he uh kind of snickers a little bit well, player to DM, I'm worried that I'd ever have a relationship because I have to do sadistic things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. See, you gotta prep. You gotta prep for it. That's all. Yeah, man, you gotta make sure you got your tear ducts ready and shit. You know, right? Um, he says, "Well, and you understand that in joining the Harpers, you." would have orders. You may not always agree with them, but they would need to be carried out. As long as they're for good, I have no issue. Do you understand what the greater good often takes sacrifice? Yes? Always has. Let me give you a scenario. I cast Fireball. I'm kidding. <laughs> That's not my answer. I wait for his question. Here's one. As he thinks for a moment. War on the horizon. And a king does not actually believe that it will come to his doorstep. Forces of the opposing army are already marching. Heading that way. You learned of this. But you were ordered to keep quiet. Let the village fall. The reason for this is that if you were to impose yourself, 
it would, unfortunately, expose the network. And if our spies were to fall to the wrong hands, well, I'm sure you could understand that would be bad. Of course. Do you follow the orders and let the village fall to the opposing army, or do you try to intervene? Are these my only two options? Because it seems like a false dichotomy. If you have another option, let me hear it. What keeps the villagers there? What's their primary industry? Hmm. Let's say farming. Growing crops. What season is it? He looks a little confused by this line of questioning, but says... Fall. It is autumn. Have the, have the crops been harvested yet? No. When I burn the crops in the night, I'm thinking of the hopes that they'll go to the king in, uh, in search of assistance, given that the crops have just been burnt. Hopefully that'll buy them time to get away from the army, not knowing that they're actually fleeing the army. Now, if I was given only the choice of either letting them fall or betraying the network, I would let them fall. See a... Uh, what you could only describe as a toothy smile start to spread across his face. Very well. He takes out a ink pot from a shelf behind him and a piece of paper. Or parchment, sorry. He writes something down. He folds it. Melts some wax. Pulls out a stamp. Seals the letter as next time you go to the surface, take this to Matram. Sure, you probably came down through the yawning portal, yes? We did. So you must know of the minstrel there. Indeed, we do. Give him this letter. I will. Thank you. You're welcome, Valoran. I'll take the letter and reach into my bag, pull out a book, and put the letter in the book so that it's not mutilated or folded. Basically, press it between the pages. Art. Well, uh, you had said something about uh, spell scrolls. What exactly is that you're looking for? I think the thing that would next best serve my party is counter spell. The ability to stop opposing mages from casting uh, harmful spells. I see. And I take it this is something you are trying to learn, or... Indeed, it's something I would commit to my spell book. Very well. Second. Well, it is a third level.
he uh, he pulls out another peach parchment and he returns the ink pot and quill to the shelf and he opens a drawer in a small desk underneath the shelf. He pulls out what seems to be a, another ink pot and a different quill. He says, this will only take a moment. He begins to draw symbols upon this. It's a parchment. As he does so, um, he also casts Counterspell as he's touching this parchment. Here. Use it well. You know what you Scroll towards you. Oh, thank you. I'll stand and bow slightly towards him as I take the scroll. Uh, there was something else. I believe you said you had two questions. Oh, no, that was the two. The Counterspell and the Harpers. Ah. Very good. Well, I wish you luck in finding this creature. Try to remember that if you do find it, the consequences could be dire. Just with mixed emotions that we search for it, to be honest. Tell me if you can, sir, what is the Harper's position on the Xanathar? On the Xanathar's guilds. <laughs> Xanathar, thank you. Damn it. We, uh... We have been enemies for quite some time. Mintar looks over. Ain't that the truth? The friend of my friend. He says, uh, just remember that when the consequences of this do happen, it is going to be up to you to deal with them. I would hope that you would not leave the people of Skullport be swept away by the war that is coming. I can't imagine that that's a desire for any of us. When it is all said and over, if you need to get out under mountain quickly. I would suggest I'm going to see Taz in the which uh, mid level, I think, right? Yeah, by the uh in the mid-level, you'll find him at the Poison Quill. For some reason, he seems to be the only one who is able to use any kind of teleportation spells under Mountain. He will charge a rather nominal fee. 50 gold per person up front to get you out quickly. Understood. Thank you. Well, if that is all, I have some things I must attend to. That's all I have. Anybody else? Uh, no. No, nothing else, but you've been very helpful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Indeed. Thank you for everything. Oh, wait. Way, oh. Ray will like rustle around in her bag and pull out a sculpture. <laughs> How many more <laughs> <words> you got? 
I think I only have one left. We'll have to buy more wood. Yeah, sh she'll make more, don't worry. As you pull out this figurine and you push it towards him, he is also rather confused. Was this one of the, you know, decently done ones, or is this a uh, not-so-good one? It's, like, in the middle. I don't have very many good ones, so it's, like, medium. You can maybe see that it kind of has a snoot of a bear. And maybe an ear that looks like a bear ear. How oh, interesting. And what is this supposed to be? Um, it's a bear. Duh. Oh. Huh. I believe I might be able to use this up there. Ray will just be like, y yeah, you've probably seen them like around town, maybe. Do you like does this little like I'm famous? <laughs> hmm. I can't say as though I have, fortunately, but you've given a lot of these out. Just a few to people that I like. Ah. You know, but always possibly sell these if you were to maybe uh, attach some magic to them. You ever heard of figurines of wondrous power? Ray's ears just perk up. I'm saying, what? There are figurines, uh, usually crafted from stone or wood, and often these have special abilities placed upon them, where you can call forth a spirit of a certain creature, usually whatever creature is depicted in the figurine. For instance, uh, you were to get a little bit better, of course. No insults intended. And making this look more like a bear. You could possibly get them enchanted to attach a bear spirit so that one called forth. A bear would appear. Ray's eyes just get huge, and she, like, slowly turns her head to Yukina. Yukina meets your gaze. Um, but he looks over at, uh, uh... Felrax looks over at Din. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Father has, yes. uh, had one for quite some time, as... The stories tell. Yes, indeed. I, I've heard quite the stories about <laughs> about his companion. <laughs> uh, okay, how do I do this? Well, the enchantment is rather pricey. But uh, I might know some people. Maybe some people that Valoran will soon get to know as well. Uh, Rabel, oh, I'll just Rabel look to Val and be like, is that the Humbers? Val was back. I think so. Ray's just got a stupid big smile on her face like she's so excited for this news. And you know, if uh, you were to begin crafting them, it could be a nice side income that you can continue to do the good work that you are apt to do.
Okay, so I gotta get good at carving the creature, and then I can put a spell on it, and then I can have a pet friend? Ray's just like, yes, please. He smiles. Well, if there's nothing else, I will bid you all good day. You may come and go as you please. But I do have some work to attend to. And as he gets up and uh, starts to head towards this wall, once again, he pauses. And I would ask that, though there is a life debt between you and this Minotaur, I would appreciate it if you did not let him roam freely through my home. His life debt is to you. Not to me. Understood. Yeah, Ren's just going to grunt like, because mm. that's her usual thing. And with that, he passes through the wall. So, what do you guys want to do now? Um, I guess we just start roaming with the monocle a little bit. Would. Okay. So, you guys may <clears throat> see. We'll do this. Minotaur says, where would you all like to go? <clears throat> Sorry, where would you like to go? Where's the Xenathar headquarters? And player to party, what I'm thinking here is, if I had an asset like an elevator, would I keep him out alone by himself, isolated, where he could be picked off? Or would I keep him surrounded by other people that could protect him until I needed to use him? Also, it's just good to know where they are so you know where to attack and where to defend. There. The Minotaur will answer. Headquarters. The if entrance. there is such a thing. Go ahead, sir. Did you all come through the island, or did you come through a tunnel? Through the island. Then you pass through their fortress. Ah. Interesting. Okay. Oh, I did not give you guys explore mode on this thing, did I? Uh, no. So we can't see where we've been. <clears throat> All right, give me a second. To move you guys back to where you came in and then we're gonna follow the path you guys took so that you guys have some knowledge here oh that's the wrong way i don't know just wondering ray do you have any desire to find a carpenter shop or wood i mean i won't say no if we got time Figure we got time. We don't know where we're going. Yeah, man. All right, there you go. That is the places you have been so far. 
on this level. Okay. So that's everywhere we've been. Yep. Sounds good. Um <clears throat> Yes. Uh, where do you think we should go first? Uh, Zin looks to Val. Well, it doesn't matter where we look. We're looking, so let's aim for a carpenter. Mm -hmm. I mean, if y'all are up for it. Or we could find out where the busiest like intersection is in town and just hang out. Maybe there's a cafe I mean, there. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with looking for a carpenter, and perhaps we can ask if there's been any killings on this level as well. Good point. Okay. Let's uh, see. He's still a carpenter. You look for a carpenter. Yeah, we'll ask the Minotaur if he knows if there is one in the town. You said the walkway was uh, wood? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just start ripping up planks. <laughs> right. Yoink. <laughs> Mine now, bitch. Breaking it down. Uh, I'm just taking a look to see if there's anything useful. I'm just gonna have to make one up. So, Minotaur says, mm, There is place middle level. I am hungry. Shall we stop at the nearest tent? Mmm. Mmm, food. Yeah, Ren's probably happy with that, I assume. So. And with that, he, he he just starts to walk. Okay, we'll follow. Lead you up here uh, to what seems to be a tunnel through the rocks. Continues in. And then. Out the other side. And while we're walking, I'm looking at every person that we see with the through the monocle, of course. Yep. And you see uh, before you. All right. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, I should have you guys on this one here. You notice a massive worm. As you come around the corner and you see it for the first time, uh, the image is a little startling. However, it takes all of about two seconds to realize that this creature uh, has long since died. And its flesh has seemed to have almost become petrified. Like it is thousands of years old. It does not seem to be much different than the stone of the cavern walls. There's good food here. As he walks in, you hear several people shout, Hey! Hey, you're not supposed to be up here! I guide. He says as he uh, grips his axe handle and tighter. And they all kind of back off. Um, you can see that the inside of this worm uh, has been turned into a restaurant. Sorry, right, I lost it. Ah. 
He looks back at you all and says, This called Worm's Bullet. The petrified worm has been hollowed out. Um, though it, it is petrified, you could definitely tell that once upon a time this was a purple worm. You can all do natures if you like. Wow. Damn. Um, Valorin, you know that purple worms are um, gargantuan creatures. Um, some say as old as time itself. And to find one turned into a restaurant is, albeit strange, but interesting. The place Valorin is... Will... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say Valorin will use his dose of voice and share everything with the party. Dose of what? Docent voice. Like oh. a museum docent. Being a stuffy asshole, basically. Oh. <laughs> All right. I thought you said dose of poison. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, we're getting down now. Um, inside, you see that this place has been well furnished. And given the state of the rest of the city, what it looks like, this actually looks rather... Fancy. Um, most of the people here, uh, you do see a few um, Durgar, you see several kobolds, which all seem to be uh, serving food and the drink. Um, you do notice that there is one Durgar at a particular table. Uh, they seem to be giving him um, extra good service there's even uh what looks to be chains around the area quite a bit like uh like a vip area you're all greeted uh, about here by one of the kobolds hi ah yeah uh how, how many? How many seats? Table for six. Six, please. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And he leads you over um, to an area in this corner here. And he sits you all down. Uh, he hands you menus. And you can see that uh, this kobold, uh, much like the rest of them, is actually in what we would call a tuxedo. And as he seats you all, he hands uh, out what looks to be um, uh, parchments. Scribbled down on it is uh, the menu. Says, ah, I'm, I'm Saladier. I'll, I'll, I'll be your servant today. Ah, uh, okay, what, what can I get you? To, to start, you know, uh, what's your palate? Drinks, perhaps? Well, yes, of, of course. What do you have? Uh, we, uh, we have, uh, lots of things. We, we got lots of things. We, we, we got some stuff from the surface. Uh, there's, uh, what we call the, the water deep red. Uh, that's that's uh, a really tasty wine. Yeah, yeah, wine. Uh, we also got some uh, uh, Durgar ale. 
That that that's pretty good. Pretty good. Uh and uh well we also have water. So I've noticed down here that things seem to taste a little different than they did on the surface. Is that also the same in your restaurant? No, 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 no. Uh here this this area is uh is is actually outside of uh uh, the veil of the shadow fell oh you're you're good here you're good it's it's good for oh, you thank god yeah the shadow fell is you know it's areas you know some places the the veil is weak and you know everything tastes horrible and muddy and mucky and gross but here here good good always good here yeah i'll have a water deep bread and whatever my friends are having the drink is on me Minotaur orders, uh, like, three ales. Who said you're my friend? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I didn't Rude. do. <laughs> Rude, Tiefling. Oh, you've got thick skin. Or hide. Huh. Um, Cobalt, uh, goes off and and you, as you see him uh, leaving, after you have all ordered before, your drinks... Before he leaves, I'm going to wave him back down and say, Wait, no one else ordered a drink? Oh, I'm, I'm just going to say that everybody ordered their oh, drinks, okay. really. Fair enough. They, this is just kind of a side thing. Okay. Um, but as uh, he starts to head off uh, into the back, uh, you see the Duergar in the VIP area wave him over. Uh, you see a, his head kind of go down, and he wanders over very quickly. And you can see uh, the Deergar saying something to him. However, what he's saying, can't really hear it. And uh, as Cobal does head into the back, He comes back out um, with two other cobalts. This one is carrying the drinks. And the other two carry plates. Upon these plates, as they place them in front of you, is uh, what looks to be almost like some sort of meatloaf. There is what looks to be a souffle. There's a stew. And what looks to be a meat pie. And he places... Let's see, we're going to go... The loaf is going to be placed in front of the Minotaur. The pie will be placed in front of Ben. Souffle will be placed in front of uh, Ray. And the stew will be placed in front of both Thin and Yukna and Valoran, you are going to get a souffle as well. Ah, hope you enjoy. This good food, good food. Yeah. And they start to walk off. Excuse me, is this ramen? What's this about? Oh, well, Gars, Gars, you know, chooses what everybody eats here. Who's Gars? Oh, the, the owner, and kind of like uh, motions towards the Durgar in the, what looks to be the VIP area. Oh, okay. I'll raise my glass and salute Gars. He, uh, he kind of nods. Goes back to his own dinner. As you all begin to eat,
the meals taste a little bit strange. Good, but strange. As you're about halfway through, Jorgar walks over. What brings you all here? With such company. As he motions to the Minotaur. We were new in town and engaged him to show us the town. I hope he's not offensive. Hmm. Well. You it's know, actually very charming once you get to know him. We don't usually allow the Minotaurs in here. Not exactly the uh, fine dining type, you know. You could say that about all of us. I'm curious why the Minotaur decided to bring you here, though. Said the food um, was best here. Go ahead, I'm his sorry. Name is, his name is William. That is not my name. Have you decided his name yet? Um, I know it started with a C. I remember that. Moby, Moby the Golden Calf. Oh, Jesus. Okay, we shall call him Clark. I mean, I'm just kind of waiting until Ren gets back next session, and we'll find out what his name is. Yeah, that's fine. It's just funny calling him William and Clark. Yeah, but he, he, he's not going to give you his name again, but he's every time you guys call him by a different name, he's like, that is not my name. <laughs> okay, Clint. That is not my nice. name either. Um, He says, well, I have been hearing the rumors Do tell. A group of outsiders been looking for uh, a mind flayer. Hmm? Don't suppose that be ye. Never seen one in person before. We are, we are here investigating the random deaths. As to what caused them, we aren't sure as of yet. So you're doing an investigation that the Z Xanathar's Guild did not give you the okay to do? Am I getting this correct? Sorry, <clears throat> am I getting this correct? Hmm. Oh, we, we haven't really talked to many people since we've been here. We just knew it was a, a problem and we wanted to help out. But if we were to seek their sanction, who might we talk with? We'd pay to go afoul of them. Uh, who the leader at the... Okay, not that one. Okay, so the leader is not mentioned. Um, let's go with William. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Ah, a man named William. Back at uh, Skull Island. I'd advise you not to be uh, poking your nose where it don't belong, though. No, of course, we'd hate to give offense. 
how might one seek a uh, an audience with William? You ask for one. Fair point. I'd be very careful, though. They'd be dangerous waters. Point taken. We're very good at swimming. He kind of looks at you after that comment. Uh, well, just remember, deeper the water, the bigger the animals. Enjoy your sturge, carrion crawler, and, and, uh, bump and hot streaker pies. And he kind of walks away. And as he is doing so, he, one of the kobolds doesn't see him coming. And he does not break stride. He doesn't go around. He just walks right over top of him, driving the kobold to the ground and just walking across his back and going back to his section and sitting down again. He seems nice. Yeah. The uh, Minotaur finishes uh, his pie in just a few bites, really, and downs his three ales. And one of the kobolds immediately comes over. Ah, did, did you like your pie? Was good. Says, yes, our uh, our hot, uh, heart, hot streaker pies are, you know, one of our specialties. Uh, along with that uh, carrion crawler souffle, that's uh, it's actually one of my favorites. That was excellent. Uh, well, uh, that uh, that'll be six. Oh, uh, that's uh, four gold for your meal, please. I got it. I'll give him four gold. And I'll give him a gold tip. Oh, uh... Thank you. He kind of looks at the extra gold coin, and... As you hand it to him, he looks back over, and he doesn't see... Uh, it looks like Gars is not paying attention. And you see him kind of slip the extra gold coin into his pouch. Thank, thank you very much. As you all get up to leave, um, the kobold wanders away, and you hear Gars holler. You! Get over here! As you guys are he uh, about to head out, you can see the, the kobold walk over to him. And he stands out of his seat, walks over, Grabs the cobalt by the throat and picks him up. He pulls the extra gold out of um, a small pouch. Trying to hide this from me? Huh? N no, p please, sir. I, I didn't mean... Crack! Body goes limp as his neck snaps. The other two cobalts pick up his body that Gars has thrown to the floor and carries it out. Gars is definitely on my shit list now. Mm-hmm. But I don't think now is the time to kill him. Agreed. Unfortunately. Indeed. More is the pity. As the Minotaur um, doesn't even break stride as this all happens. And you guys are starting to catch up with him. As down here, no kind act goes on. And he continues out. 
I'll ask him, does that include giving people bare wood carvings? No. I'm just curious. I'm just being an asshole to him because, you know. Monetary value. Your statues, carvings. They hold no monetary value. Okay, now he's rude. <laughs> yeah, so rude. But they will one money. day. You will wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> mm, right. But he continues to lead you out, and you guys said you want to go down to the second level, yeah? Yeah, looking for some wood. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and explore. Hey. Yeah, it's like the whole time we're walking through everything, I'm, I'm just, you know, obviously looking uh, around, trying to see if I see anything. Um, You use your monocle, and so far you have not really caught anything out of the ordinary. Everything seems to be what it is. He leads you uh, out the tunnels a different way, and you arrive at what looks to be a door let's see and what is where does this lead you give me a second ah I see I see wait why is he there he was in the other place is confusing I mean the thing is basically a maze yeah it is I should For see if we real. can find a map <laughs> okay oh that's is why. this Tarkov can I can I google a, a <laughs> right? map on the side where's my quest items they're in dorms oh god <laughs> oh fucking hate dorms um okay the worst I see. That makes more sense now. Okay. So as he leads you through the door uh, to a set of stairs, you come out. Now, let's see. Second level. Okay, so as you guys uh, descend the stairs and enter uh, the mid-level of, excuse me, of Skullport, you find yourselves inside of a small foundry. I think. Oh, I see, I see. 
Okay, that makes sense then. Yes. Sorry, this it, this map's really confusing. But I, I think I got it now. You guys find That's yourselves okay. inside of a uh, squat room. Um, from further down the stairs, if you were to continue on, you can hear uh, Urgar yelling back and forth. And the sound of smith hammers ringing out. This area is extremely warm. Lead you to believe that there's probably a uh, large furnace on the lower level. Currently, there is nobody on this floor. And as he, uh, you saw the Minotaur when he got to the bottom, and he kind of opened the the area and kind of looked back and forth. He's like, "All right, no one's here. We should, uh, we should go, or we're found." Durga, run the foundry downstairs. Let's go. He leads you to this uh, door at the side of the room here, and opens the door and pulls you all through. I'm going to move you guys just so I don't got to open the actual or move the yeah, dynamic lighting and shit. Alright. As you get to here, uh, you can definitely see there is quite a bit of hustle and bustle going on around the mid-level. Well, I believe you wanted a carpentry place, yeah? Please. Yep. Hey. Well, we're here. Uh, you can see him just open the door. Step inside. Uh, you see along the walls there are uh, several wood blocks, um, piles of timber, um, quite obviously brought down from at the surface. And let me find a commoner stop block. Standing behind a wood counter, um, seemingly going over what looks to be a ledger, stands a man. Ah, uh, oh, oh my, you're, you're quite large. Uh, did, there's something I can help you with. He goes, wood. That one wants wood. Ah, well, you've, you've come to the right place. Uh, uh, may I ask what, uh, what it is you need wood for? Uh, depending on what you need, I can, I can give you some recommendations. Um, Ray will just describe that she just needs some wood to make some pocket-sized figurines, but she would like it a little bit extra because we're still learning. Ah, oh, I, I see. Um, do you perhaps have one of these figurines on you that I can take a look at? You betcha! And she, like, reaches inside her pouch and, like, pulls one out. And this one's, like, kind of good. Ah, oh, I see. Well, let me see. Uh, and it, it's this type you were always doing? Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Let's see. Um, now, I do have several woods that are, are good for carving. I'm curious. Do you want yours to last longer? Uh, be easier to use? Uh... Well, what exactly is it you you wish to uh, do? And I, I can I can recommend something for you. Um, something that's like good for beginners, but also durable 
And maybe once it's like sanded, it looks pretty. Be okay. Uh, well, your most durable is going to be the oak. Uh, that is uh, rather pricey, I will be honest. Uh, so if you're looking for longer durability, something that uh, if you put some finish on it, it can actually bring out the, the grains of the wood and really give this thing life. Um, however, if you are wanting something on the more cheaper side, there's pine is usually pretty good. Um, now, I do have another one, but it is quite pricey. Uh, the reason being is um, the trees are rather rare. And unfortunately, uh, it is quite dangerous to get this wood. Uh, they tend to... The forests where they are are extremely deadly. Whoa, what is it? Um, that kind of got to find the name of it. Uh, they call it the sandbox tree. Now, the way it spreads its seed is, uh, now, unlike most, where, you know, a maple has the, the little helicopter, the, nope, you wouldn't know what a helicopter is, those twirling seeds that fly on the wind. Um, this tree, it's rather dangerous to harvest due to uh, the poisonous thorns along its uh, body uh, on the bark, as well as the fruit that grows on it. Uh, it tends to explode. That's how it spreads the seed. Um, it sounds an awful lot like a cannon going off when it explodes. Whoa, how much is that? Uh, well, if you're looking for your standard, uh, let's see. If you're looking for, say, an 8 inch by 4 inch by 4 inch, uh, which I think you would probably want to make a decent figure. You're looking at about uh, 2 gold apiece. Okay, As I and said, what is the other one? It is extremely hard to get. Uh, let's see, the oak. The oak is about a gold apiece, and the pine is uh, about 5 silver apiece. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. Can I do... Let's do... Ten... Pine. Mm-hmm. And... Um, five pieces of oak. Okay. Indeed, indeed. And three of the sandbox. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Very well. And he gives you the total as he uh, gathers up all the uh, the blocks. Okay, and then Ray will like fiddle through her bag and like count all her change and then pay him. Uh, may I suggest um, uh, a nice finish? So how this would work is when you do your carving, you, you know, get rid of all the, the sawdust touch. And then uh, Give it a, a nice coating. Now, it does take about eight hours to dry, but it will make sure that it uh, it makes it last longer. You now, people can touch it without worrying about their, their hands, uh, the oil from their hands slowly corroding the, the green over time. Okay, how much is that? Well, uh, I do have a 
We sell them in vials of or five vials, and they are uh, for the set. Let's see, one for pine. Need some for oak, and some for uh, the sandbox tree. Uh, I'm going to say about two gold for. Um, you know what? I'll th I'll even throw in an extra vial for free. Two for the pine, two for the, the sandbox tree, and two for the uh, the oak. Make sure you use the proper one with the proper wood, uh, or it may not work quite as well as you would expect. Uh, but yeah, two gold. Two gold sounds right. Okay, deal. Very well. Um, yeah, he, he pulls out the, the vials, uh, makes sure he's got the right ones, and he sets them on the counter, uh, along with the wood blocks. Is there anything else I can help you with? Do you by chance have magical carving sets? I'm sorry, magical carving sets? I... Don't yeah, understand making what for you mean. benefit or uh, making for an advantage or some benefit to the uh, skill of the carver, allow them to achieve new heights of perfection. Uh, unfortunately, no. I I don't deal in uh, magic here. Uh, just mostly people looking to reinforce their home and and such things. Uh, sometimes, in this instance, uh, carvers. Um, but I have nothing magical here, unfortunately. Fair point. Well, is there anything else I can help you with? I think that's all. Well, thank you for coming in. Uh, I am... Uh... Wow, my mind just went blank. I am, uh... They, they call me Dees. First name Bofa. Did you know? Lucky guess. Ah. Wonderful. My, my name must be picking up some ground around here. I've heard it a lot lately. Ah. <laughs> That's excellent. Yes. Oh, God. Well... Make sure to uh, stop back in for uh, some more D's wood, if you would uh, be so inclined in a later date. Nice. Benatar says, Oh, we done? Where to next? Some nods. Uh, Sinwal asks the Minotaur if um, he knows of any deaths on this floor. Not that I've heard of. Is there any deaths on the third floor? Not that I've heard of. Hmm. If you wish to find this creature, I might suggest the island. Yeah, oh, where the Zathari Guild was? That's right? Yes. I believe that it is being ordered to give these Perpetuate these murders. Good chance. Is that the island? Then nods. Then that may be our best bet. And they'll turn to, to Valerian and uh, Ray and ask, what do you think? Player to DM, what time is it? Um. We quit at 10 a.m. game time the last time. 
so I'm gonna say that traversing around, uh, you're probably looking like mid afternoon ish. Like four o'clock ish, two o'clock ish. Yeah, let's 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 go with about uh, three thirty ish. Why not? Okay. How far is it to the uh, the island? Uh, well, you got to go back down to the first level and then go south to get to the island. How long do you figure it'll take us? Mm. All right, I guess I'm, I'm more so asking the uh, the Minotaur because I wouldn't know, right? Let's see. There's a bear. Bear. Yeah, is it like a three hours away? Maybe an hour? 30 minutes. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, then uh, I, I say we uh, we head over there now. What, what do the rest of you think? I'm better the devil you know. Let's find out what we're dealing with. Sounds good. Yeah, and a ha half an hour is not too far. Not at all. Hey. Okay. Well, let's. He's going to lead you to some stairs as I figure out how the fuck to get over there. Okay. So he leads you back over to here, uh, what looks to be uh, the bottom floor of um, Dalagor's fortress, where Felrax lives. Same kind of gate standing out front, but he turns to the right. And he says, uh, this one takes us downstairs to lower level as gets you to here. Should we work on a cover story before we walk in and try and add lib? Uh, not the worst idea. What would you suggest? What would you think of uh, maybe trying to hire them to kill somebody using the illithid and ambush? But that kind of commits us to an all-out war right then if we get caught. true it might put us in a bit of a tough position in the end so i guess the question is ultimately do we want to try and get rid of them and clear the town clear the town uh, i think so based off of our conversations with the harpers at least they don't seem to be the most uh hospitable owners and so if we want to get rid of them, who do we put in as replacements? <clears throat> or who rises well, to the top? The Drogar would help us if we did. But the townsfolk also don't seem super keen on them either, to be honest. Uh, some people say they're better, at least. Do we let them fight against each other, weaken themselves, and then try and kill them both? And then install a democracy? Also a possibility. <clears throat> it uh, would be nice if we could handle the Illithid first, though. Yeah, he'd be a bitch in combat. Mm hmm. Hmm. 
You know what we really need is a wood elf who's good at sneaking and shooting shit with a bow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can sneak and shoot shit with a bow. There you go. And I don't mean what to doubt you? you, but I think we ought to try and all kill the elephant together. I don't. Yeah, I think he's going to be a bitch to kill, even with all of us working that. together. Yeah. Oh. I guess the real question is, what are we going to propose to them that we're there for? Traitors? Asking for permission to work in their area? Or maybe some supplies to them? Trying to think of what we can provide them that they don't already have. Yeah, we don't really have much on us right now. I mean, we can ask, we can play dumb and ask about the Elithid, but most likely if they are in cahoots with it or using it, they're not going to give us anything, right? Yeah, no, then they'll just clap us in chains or kill us right there. Uh, Zin will ask, how heavily guarded is the island? The Minotaur. Through it, did you not see? Oh, that was, it's that island. Okay. But I thought that was the, where all the Drugar were. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's the, the one and the same. The Drugar and the, uh, Denethar's Guild both, uh, are posted there. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay. So it's huge. It's monstrous. Uh, ballistas. Lots of monsters. I believe they have wyvern. Maybe something else there as well. Mm. And we will need a reason to be in there, correct? Well, you said you wanted to have a meeting with the higher up there, did you not? Here's a question. If the Dwergar and the Xenathar are in the same key, and we meet the Dwergar tonight to talk about a possible uh, change of command, could they help get us in? What do you mean? So, Minotaur, will you, will you excuse us for just a minute to talk amongst ourselves? He looks at Ren. And Ren, Ren's gonna nod. Um. Very well. Uh, Zin will turn to Valerian because it just occurred to him that tonight we are supposed to meet with the Drugar. Exactly. About four hours. Mm -hmm. Perhaps we need to stall on the island and meet with them first. I'm thinking that could be good. Especially if, if, we, if we have to go with the all-out war strategy. Might be the only way we get into the island. Without causing suspicion exactly and I think when we finally decide to strike we need to be in the right place or we're just going to bounce off all the members like so much dust in the wind and that'll be the end of us the nods and the other thing that worries me is that if this minotaur sees Ren go down does that extinguish his dead and he can then attack us well, he's no longer he's not going to be welcome to the Xanathar Guild, most likely. I hear you. Would they welcome him back if you were to share information about people plotting an overthrow? That's a fair point. Hmm. Okay. Well, I think we will. Uh... So if we meet the dwarves or the Rhaegar, 
can they have us pose as members of their organization to give us access to most of the keep so we can map it out and study it? Potentially, what we all, we'd have to speak with them. We'll have to speak with them tonight, then. Yeah, I think so. Okay. What do I you think, think that's Ray? Best bet. What do you think, Ray? I I mean, I'm fine meeting the Durgar first. Whatever's like the least dangerous. I don't want to die. Going back up top and becoming NPCs. That's that is the least dangerous. <laughs> okay. And the hero's journeys ended there as they all set sail for a steady life of farming. I Not love farming. Sale, but... <laughs> farming is real work. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I mean, I'm fine to meet the Durgar. I think that makes the most sense, logically. Okay, let's do that then. Might we want to have our Minotaur friend wait at... Uh... What's his name? Uh, oh god, the guy we met. Uh, oh. Damn it, I wrote it down. Which Old guy? Vira? No, the the mage guy. We can't let uh, the Minotaur be alone up there. He oh, that's right. I gotta keep an eye. Right. Yep, yep, yep. Now we could have him stand outside. I mean, he, I think he did. I think when we first spoke to him. He he did know of a couple safe places for himself down on the first level too. That might work. Yeah. Meet him up later. Yeah, it's true. Cool. Let's do it. We can like let him be at ease for the evening. Yeah. All right. So, what is the plan? I'm sorry, I was uh, doing a little research while you guys were talking. Just just give me an overview. I think... Yeah, I think we're going to go back to where the Harper lady is down on the first floor. And um, because we're supposed to meet the Drugar tonight for the deal, because we might be helping them. Um, and then uh, we'll uh, let the Minotaur have the night off effectively to do whatever they want to do. Uh, because I think last time we spoke to him, he said he knew of a couple safe places for himself okay. down here. And then uh, hopefully the conversation with the Drogar go good, and then maybe we'll see how if we can get into the island tomorrow. Okay. And I'd like that from a magical perspective, because then I got a counter spell. Fair. Yeah, we just but we just need to talk to the Drogar this year if because they if we can get that deal struck so that they uh, we can take down the Zenithar Guild. Yep. Okay. You guys are just heading back to um, uh, what was that person's place? The Poison Quill, Tasselgrin. Oh, that's Tasselgrin's shop. Uh, but it's the Poison Quill we're going to. Oh no, Flagon and Dragon! Damn it, I lied. Flagon and Dragon. We're going to meet Veldir, Farmar, and Brander. Hi. Right. Take a look here. Okay. So, are you guys calling the Minotaur back then? Yeah, we'll call him back, yeah. and then we'll let him have the night off effectively. And I think it's there is where we where we were. It's number nineteen. I know where it is. Not okay, far. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see the numbers, so. <clears throat> All right, so uh, you guys uh, inform him he's got the evening off, and uh, he basically says, "Life debt, never evening off." I would ask Renda to have him hide somewhere until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning when we'll meet him back at the wizard's house. Life debt fulfilled by hiding. 
Hmm. Minotaur don't like hiding, but fine. I cannot travel the upper levels by myself. You will have to fetch me. In Okay, how about we meet you at... Well, we're only on level... We're only on the first left floor. Mm. We're not going to be on the upper levels. Yeah. yeah, but the mage's place is on the upper level. I think yep. there. It's on, yeah, we, it's on level two we and don't three. Need, oh, we don't need to go to the mage's place. We, we, have a, we also have a safe place on level one at that lady's place. She said we can Flagging stay there whenever we want. Flag and a dragon? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we can just stay on level one, and then we don't have to worry about it for now. Works. All right, well, he is going to uh, say that he's going to go back to the area where all, uh, um, where you guys head out after the fight. Okay. That makes sense. I believe it was up there. No. Yeah, we fought by this thing, this well. Is it that well? No, oh, wait, no. The, where the dead bodies are on the map, further left. Oh, yeah, I see. I can't see them because we're not there anymore. Yeah. Um, but... You uh, have the power. I got him where he's going to hide. Um, cool. But you guys uh, take it, you're heading off to uh, Lagan and Dragon? Yeah. yeah, that's where the first Harper lady was, I believe. You guys enter, and uh, she is uh, back. Ah, welcome. Glad you've uh, arrived back in one piece. It's an interesting yeah. town you have here. Yeah. <laughs> Quite. It's quite interesting it? indeed. Well, uh, I believe the Durgar are supposed to come back in a few hours. Or, uh, can I get you anything while you wait? Um, yeah, per perhaps we can have some drinks. And, uh, I'm sure a couple of us would like some light snacks. Of course. Uh, she gets some out and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and it's, it's on the, she says, uh, it, it's on the house. Please, uh, have a seat. Thank you. That is very kind of you. And then Zin will go have a seat. And, uh, with that, we are going to take a quick break because I need to use the bathroom. So. Fair enough. Um, when we come back, do you guys just want to fast forward to the uh, meeting? Yes, please. All right. I have one one question. Stop. Copying scrolls into a spell book, does it have to be uninterrupted time? Or can it be broken out into groups? Uh, uninterrupted. Roger that. All right. Uh, we'll be right back, everybody. Hello, hello. All right, cool. So, you guys uh, have your drinks and snacks and wait for the meeting. Uh, you guys hear the door open and in walk the Durgar and their were rat bodyguards. Hi, hello. Round for the boys. Yes, of course. Uh, she starts pouring the drinks. 
and uh, you notice that we're rats actually don't come inside. They seem to be uh, standing outside the door. And the Jorgar all grab their drinks and join you at the table. You see as they walk in, uh, most of the other tables all empty and leave. Bye. Oh. We, uh, brought it up to our superiors. And before we agree, we, we got a couple questions. Of course. So, we take Skullport from the Xanathar's Guild. We will obviously take the power. But, what y'all be planning on doing about Xanathar? You mean after they're defeated and killed? Well, of course. You, you know that it's called the Xanathar's Guild because of Xanathar himself. I? Yeah. So, Are you worried about a counterattack? You ever faced a beholder before? Something very close to. Well... I don't know if you know this, but Xanathar is the title of the leader of the Xanathar Guild. Yeah. And oh, what are we supposed about to do about Xanathar himself, not the guild? I got you. Yeah. Ah. Well, speak up. I guess long term we'd have to try and kill him. Or make this place so unpalatable that he doesn't counterattack. Yeah. Z Xanathar is I'm pr pretty confident as he looks at the party that he's he's on our list. <laughs> You'd be trying to take out Xanathar all by yourselves. Allies are always welcome. We have quite a lofty goal set for this group, let's say that. You can only fell the largest tree with a single chop at a time. I... That one's going to be taking a lot of chops. Yes, it is. Well, here's what I can tell you. Tomorrow, we can deal with the guild, but that's as far as we go. Xanathar himself wants to start something. Well, that's going to be a whole nother ball of, or whole nother sports reference insert here. We're <laughs> <Door> pulling. <laughs> That one, you'll be on your own. But if these terms are amenable, then we have a steal. I'll look at the rest of the party for their assent. Yes, that is that's fair enough. I I understand that at this point the the only benefit to use to claim power in this place and. Fighting Z Xanathar himself doesn't help you. That taking over the guild does, though. Aye. It's understandable. So, oh, I'm able to do it. Deal, then. We have two more votes. I think Ren is just going to kind of go along with the majority. Um. Yeah, I'm cool. 
then you should probably wear a jacket. <laughs> nice. Okay, dude. All and, right. Uh, w sorry. And w with your with your power, once you take over, I assume you would like to t take over Skullport in more of a business sense than uh, the current agreement. Correct. You, you are a businessman after all. While it seems more about th these days, seems more about theft and thuggery as opposed to proper business, making money and having a decent economy. Our methods don't differ too much from the Xanathar Guild, mostly. We just want a bigger slice of the pie. Rather have the whole pie, honestly. An admirable goal. So, now the how. We'd like to get in and look at the castle. Can you facilitate that for us? Or do you already have a plan? smiles. He looks up from his drink. I we got a plan. Do tell. Tomorrow morning. You're gonna head to the island. With me. We're gonna set up a meeting with, uh, William. We can take him out. The rush should be pretty easy. Open warfare. But without him, they won't know what to do. There ain't no one to give orders. The ranks will fall apart quite quickly. Cut off the head and the animal dies. I would ask, uh... And as he says this, he pulls out a couple lengths of rope. The reason we're going to have a meeting with William That you're going to be my prisoners. That's a big ask. Well. So how do we kill William without our weapons? I see y'all got them bags of holding there, huh? Indeed, as long as you leave them with us. Gotta let you have them, but we get there. <clears throat> we'll have your ropes tied so that they're easy to slip from. <clears throat> your bags of holding will be dropped at your feet. That's the signal. Keep your armor and clutch on. Oh, what you think? <clears throat> nothing ventured, nothing gained. It's my take. <clears throat> Zin, uh, Zin nods. It's uh, not my favorite idea to leave things in bag of holdings, but uh, the plan in itself is solid. Seems sus. Seems so sus. Player to player. Mm. This is like player the worst. Player. Yeah. Yep. Wonder if they'll go for another plan. 
Do you have another plan? No. <laughs> I was hoping you had one. <laughs> nope. No, I don't have one this time. That's the problem. That's kind of why I'm inclined to just go along with it. So it seems we have to trust them by extension savage. That's what could possibly go wrong? Um, I think I'm going to quit. <laughs> I, they have so much to gain, though. Sorry, I know we're, we're talking out of game right now, but they have so much to gain from this. I don't yeah. see... like it, it just doesn't make sense for them to turn us in. What do they get by turning us in? A couple items? Yeah. Instead of, like, control over Skullport? Yeah, I say give it a try. If nothing else, it develops the plot. We have some more fun. Hard save. Hard okay. save, indeed. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think we and go maybe, along with it. Maybe like a second hard save, so we've got a backup in case that one gets corrupted. Solid plan. All right, we'll do it. When do we uh, meet to get tied up? Tomorrow morning? I. And by tomorrow, I hope y'all got a plan to deal with Xanathar himself. Is he here? He has a lair in the area. That's, that's a good about, detail to know. That's about all we know. How to actually reach it, I'm not yet sure. I'll leave that to you. Sounds workable. Understood. Well, with that, we say our farewells till tomorrow morning. And, and uh, clear to be. Go ahead. The, the Duergars down the rest of the drink. Uh, one of them kind of wipes his mouth, uh, dribbles. Sets it down, and they all begin to stand. Stand as well. And they head out. They open the door, you can see the, uh, uh, the were rats. Seemed like they were probably guarding the entrance. <clears throat> but they all walk off together. So, what do you want to do with your last night? Well, I think we should ask the um, Harper lady if she knows anything about the whereabouts of actual Xanathar. And I'm sure she overheard this conversation, so I'll probably ask her her thoughts. I, it's a mighty task you've taken on. Take out Xanathar himself? That's, uh, that's going to be a hard one. What if we convince Xenathar it was their idea? Point him at them. Hmm. <laughs> You're so evil. I mean, why would we do it? We have nothing to gain. We're not getting to town. So... You're thinking... A betrayal. Well, of course. How else are we going to win? We don't have the numbers to go ahead on it, either. Hmm. Well. Just so happens. Over at the Guts and Garters. <clears throat> there is a rumor that there is a tunnel that leads to the hideout, but I should warn you, Denethar is not one to be trifled with. Said, it's been said that he is uh, rather insane and more than a little paranoid. If you are banking on him believing you, well, 
worth a try, I guess. Uh, but if it fails, I hope you all know that, fortunately, he oh, will dead. kill you. Yeah. Well, answer me this. If we, if we clear the area of the Xanathar Guild, that's only a little bit better for your community, correct? Indeed. If we clear the area of the Drugar and the Xanathar Guild, that is significantly better for Skullport, right? Yes, truth. Until the next warlord comes in. Well, this is true. But with the Harpers having this information, is there a possibility that they may be able to set Skullport up before that? Your own volunteer army, as it were? Train your locals? I mean, we are merely spies don't really have an army. No, 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 I'm saying train the locals so that they become an army. An all-volunteer force headed by the locals. Skullport makes its own army, trained by the Harpers. Perhaps even talk to, um... Oh, shoot. What was that? Dragon, uh, Dragonborn's name. Felrax? Wow. Yeah, Felrax. I know he's actually a black dragon. Perhaps we could even talk to Felrax. He seems like he's got a head on his shoulder and he knows some other mages. There's some power there for sure. He might be something he might be interested in taking over and then Skullport might be in a better spot. Uh, he is one of the lesser mages down here. Um... I don't know... Oh, I thought he said he was one of the stronger ones. My bad. It, well, he's Dragonborn. Of course he says powerful. <laughs> oh, understood. <laughs> understood. Um, I don't know. Possibly it might be able to work. This is... This is a very... Dangerous plan. But it has some possibility. I will talk to someone and get back to you before tomorrow morning. Thank you. I appreciate that. My thoughts are if we're going to risk our lives anyway, we might as well get a good outcome, not a slightly less poor outcome. Agreed. And imagine all the wood drops. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we're burning one set of loot drops, just so you know. I know, I know. I'm totally kidding. So I'm, I'm assuming we're actually going to get a lot less loot by doing it this way, unfortunately. But whatever. No, that's not even a motivation. I'm in character, at least, trying to get the best outcome possible. And I think the more that we can get the Xenathar and the Dwergar to kill each other, the better the chance that we can finally keep Skull yeah, to yeah. work for their own volunteer army. Yeah, player to group, it just feels bad to do a bunch of work and then get, like, uh, the townspeople not to be in a better spot. You know, almost. Right. So. We're supposed to be the heroes of the story, okay? You gotta do something heroic. We may just end up dying a lot sooner. But it'll be glorious. Or sad. <laughs> you or both. Your joy. <laughs> True. Right. Well, I should also warn you that uh, if you do seek the meet Xanathar going through the uh, Guts and Garters, you will either have to lie your way past uh, Quietude or you may have to do something a little more, shall we say, not good. Evil. I'm sure there's a potion for that. <laughs> so, I should go meet contacts very quickly. 
You are welcome to stay here. Thank you. Thanks. And she's going to, whoops, she is going to uh, take off. <coughs> so, um, with that, what do you guys want to do for the rest of your evening? Oh, man. Um, okay. <clears throat> so... For the betrayal, is this something we tell Xanathar about, or do we do the first part and then just run back to him and blame it on them after? Player to DM, which one's the easier role? <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to tell I'll us. I know, tell. I know. I totally know, but I just had to ask a stupid question. So he's more likely well, to believe us if I come to him first. <laughs> But well, if, if I, like... okay, if I'm thinking about it this way, if we're thinking that Xanathar is the strongest thing down here, okay? And if he's the strongest thing down here, it's probably more beneficial for us to have the Drugar to beat up the guild, right? Then run to Xanathar, hope he believes us, and yeah. then he goes after just the Drugar because the Drugar will be weakened down. If that makes sense? Whereas well, if we do it the other way... If we do it the other way, Xanathar and the guild will just crush the Drugar and be up full force versus us. Good well, point. we could also bring proof of the ambush or whatever. I mean, we could bring it ahead, but I don't know what else we could bring for proof of the ambush. I say you we see this with... thing called a GoPro. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I, I, yeah, I, I think I think we have to go do it retroactively so we can get the most weakening done. Because even in that scenario, if we run to Xanathar, he doesn't believe us. We fight and hope we survive, right? Yeah. And then it's still the Drugar in charge, which are still slightly weakened, at least from the Xanathar guild. And maybe we have a shot doing it, dealing with them still. Yeah. But if we do it the other way... If they just crush the Drugar, what are we going to do? It's full force Xanathar guild plus Xanathar, you know? Yeah, and then we're done. Yeah, like we're done. We just have to l let it happen, and that feels really poor. At that point, I think we'd have to run like hell and try and get out of town. Yeah, so I think we actually have to complete the first plan wholeheartedly and then go to Xanathar afterwards, see what we can do. I hope they're not playing their own betrayal. Works for me. Let's give it a shot. There's so many ways we just die. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dumb uh. ways to die. <laughs> Sorry in advance, Ren. She's going to come back and you guys, she's going to be like, you guys did what? So follow me on this, Ren. We're going to betray them and then betray them and then betray them. Then we're going to betray these guys and this guy and that guy and we win. And we're the good guys. <laughs> Yay. Sometimes you have to fight fire with fire, guys. Sometimes good people do bad things. Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> you know, bad is a subjective term. I know, I know, I know. Okay. So. <sighs> you guys have a plan. Yeah, I don't know if it's a good one. But it's, it's a plan. It's a great plan. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> I foresee nothing going wrong here. No. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Yep. All right. So, what are y'all doing with your evening then? I'm what time is it? Chill, chilling out. Um, what time is it now? I'm going to say it is probably about. Uh, see, the meeting was at 8. So, you're looking at probably about 8 30. Got a few hours. And what time are we to meet them? Uh, they're coming back here at, I believe it was 9? Okay. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. or 9? Something like that. Uh, I think it's 9. Yeah, and the Minotaur will be there too. At 10. At 10, yeah. So, player to DM. I know I... Well, no, no, no never mind. I wouldn't get the long rest in, so I'd take fatigue. Never mind. Do you guys just want to fast forward, or? Can I try to make a couple mushrooms first? Sure. 
<laughs> yeah, like Val immediately moves. <laughs> oh um, my god. Val's not stupid. Val, I might, might I make a, a suggestion? By all means. Right before you go to sleep, cast mage armor on yourself. It only lasts for eight hours. Oh, I thought it was ten. Damn. Can you upcast it for a longer time? I don't know how it works. I uh, don't... Oh, give me a sec. I thought it lasted for ten. I was like, oh, two hours in the morning would be pretty handy. <laughs> Dang. Uh, it's a spell slot. That's why. Eight hours. So I can cast yeah, it right no before they get there. Yeah. Yeah, no upcast. Okay. Uh, damn. I was hoping there was like a little loophole there. I'll just get up a little early and I'll cast it before they get here. Fair enough. Also, a question. Can you mage armor something like Yukina? Willing creature, yes. I know Yukina is, is a... Um... And it's not concentration, so yeah. Yeah, actually, I think that drops down her AC, though, because her dex is only 12, and it goes to 13, so it would ignore the natural armor. Yeah, ignore that. That doesn't make any sense. All right, I'm good to fast forward. I know Ray's got her couple attempts, so. Dude, I've been muted this whole fucking time. God damn. Oh shit. Yeah, my bad. Ray, you can do your uh your two rolls. Actually, I guess you can probably get three in if you guys are staying up till midnight. One success. <clears throat> You're getting closer to being able to create this spell. Um, it's still not quite right, but you're getting closer. As for the rest of you, uh, take your evening to relax. And you guys get your rest in. However, right before uh, you guys settle down, um, Kalal comes back. So, <clears throat> the Harpers have decided that, uh, one second. Oh, that was weird. <clears throat> Cough, sneeze, and burping all at the same time. It's very awkward. Um, Very awkward. <clears throat> Blal comes back and says, Well, the Harpers have... Uh, haven't agreed to... try to train people, but... they say that the vacuum will still... bring... Our vacuum will still bring conflict. They're going to try to find somebody that could maybe uh, take over the control of the port. After all, it is what we do. Kingmakers and so on. But I hope you all have a plan. It's brilliant. 
Uh, plan, yes. Uh, we have something. Oh. Very well. Uh, you may stay here for the night, should you wish. Thank you, that is very kind. <clears throat> she gives you guys the blankets to set upon the tables and whatnot. Rest of digitation repeatedly to clean the place. Or at least what we're sleeping on it with. Fair enough. And morning comes. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Uh, you hear a Kalal come back. Uh, she unlocks the door and steps into the room. Well, today's the day then, eh? Yes, it is. Zen nods. I'm a little stressed out. <laughs> I, I would be too. Who dares wins. You guys can take your uh, first hour or whatnot to get your spells prepped. Those who need to prep spells <clears throat> and other such things. Get some food in you and whatnot. And almost as if Going by a perfectly timed watch. Door opens. Durgar and the beer rats step inside. <laughs> I cast Mage Armor on myself using my staff. Okay. They each start to. Uh... <clears throat> Give me one second. God damn. They each start taking ropes out of their bags and using it to um, tie your hands. And as they do, they're like, all right, now you feel this tiny piece here in your hand. And you, as you're sitting there, uh, we'll do Zen. You've got your hands behind your back, tied together. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, damn, excuse me, one sec. Sorry, apparently I'm dying today. God damn. <clears throat> what a happy coincidence, so are we. <laughs> um Zen they they tie you up first and you feel them place a rope in your hand. Oh need you to keep your hand closed. Don't let anybody see this. The time is right. You just pull it. Just try it out. Alright. Zen will give it a tug. And you feel the ropes quickly loosen, and you your hands are, are free in less than a second. <clears throat> Impressive. Okay. Right. So they take the moment to tie it all up. Tie you all up, and say, well, uh, you're about ready then. Then let's, no, do it. let's do this thing. Okay. <clears throat> they start to lead you out. And Kalal says, Luck be with yees. Hope you make it out of this alive. Same. As do I. What a happy coincidence. We wish the same thing. <clears throat> Uh, they do say there's going to be one issue, though. Oh, now they tell us. You can, uh, no way to tie this creature up properly. Oh, Zin says not to worry, and you can, uh, poofs. <clears throat> I 
<clears throat> One second, just move around here. And I was muted again. <clears throat> awesome. So as the as they start to uh, lead you towards the island, the Minotaur um, steps out of this alley. You cannot take them. And he begins to raise his axe before Ren pipes up. No, nope, stop, stop. This is necessary. He says, It is necessary to be tied. <clears throat> you guys my answer. Yeah, it, is, it is part of a, a plan, you see. It's the only way we'll get inside the the island without causing a disturbance. I see. Oh, I should. I shall follow at a distance. Understood. I think that is a good idea. He continues to lead you guys down. And go we'll flip maps. <clears throat> it's gonna be a hell of a cliffhanger <laughs> how'd you know that's what i was going for i know you man uh, <laughs> you know there's only so much time okay oh shit uh, i gotta go back to the map so i can copy and paste those deer gar As you guys get to the bridge, you see the Durgar um, atop the... Uh, at the other end. They hit the switches, and the bridge becomes more solid. They allow you to pass. <clears throat> And they say, where would he? What is? see 
Okay. <clears throat> oh, wow. This is going to be a little rough, I think. Uh, give me a second. That's not... That's not very uh, heartening. Not at all. <clears throat> hey Zen. Good sir. Yeah. Did you yeah. uh are you still wearing your monocle? Yeah, unless anybody took it off. Okay. The hope was I could still wear it on. Still wear it. Alright. So they begin to lead you through the fortress. Continue going south until you get to these buildings down here. You get to here and they then turn you south. <clears throat> you come upon this very large tower. Ah, the Tower of the Seven Woes. This is where we'll find William, along with his guard, Bundeth. It's kind of whispering this as uh, uh, the bugbears and the Durgar are mostly in amongst their barracks, and there's a few um, up top on the walls. <clears throat> um, the gargoyles here they seem to be on these towers. They seem to move and watch you as you continue on. However, you get to this building here. They open the door for you and rush them walk in. Or you all walk in, sorry. <coughs> Sitting in a large chair um, is a an eight foot tall half ogre. Ah, uh, what you Dargar be wanting? We've captured some enemies of the guild. We thought we would bring them to William. Ah, uh, William, y'all some visitors. William comes walking around the corner. This man seems to be armored with a staff in hand. You all see a human. Then I mm -hmm. want you to give me a wisdom check, please. Or either actually, you know what? Um I'm going to say a wisdom save or a perform. <laughs> Your choice. <laughs> oh, that's over 20 since that's a check and supposed to be a save. So your save, I believe you are proficient in wisdom saves, yes? Uh, no, I'm not. So it's the same. It's 19 either way. Okay. Where everybody else sees a common looking man with armor and a staff. What you see is... Hey, where'd it go? There he is. This motherfucker. I knew it. Fucking knew it. 
a mind flare. Tentacles, mind flare. Tentacles sprouting from his face. Nobody else can see. Just you. But as he looks at them all, and what is it that the creatures are accused of doing? Ah. Uh, well, I believe they were responsible for the uh, Minotaur uh, and uh, the barkeep attack. I thought that that was just a fight between those two. Ah, no. I'm pretty sure that these ones are the, the culprits. Thought we'd bring them for you for punishment. And they shove each of you just a couple feet forward and uh, kind of push you down to your knees. I'm going to move him hold down here. Um, Sundreth walks over and towards his uh, wyvern kind of pets its head. Lord, I haven't yet fed... Uh, Fed the Beastie Boy here. Maybe uh, he could be using a meal. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Maybe. Um. As they each push you down to your knees, you guys also feel them uh, suddenly drop something in between your feet. <clears throat> These are your bags of holding. That is the sign. Is it? Is this where we end, or is this where you want us to start to start uh, un, unhinging ourselves? Oh, give me one sec. As uh, as you guys feel the your bags of holding behind you at your feet, as well. I guess uh, maybe we could have a little bit of fun first. I I think I would like to take the tiefling. I have something to discuss with him. At this point, you hear the Dorgars and the Were-Rats. Blades unsheath. Now! And that is where we're going to end. Pull the lever, Kronk. Roll initiative? Nah, we'll roll initiative at the start of the next one. Oh, man. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to be fun. <laughs> oh, it's going to be chaotic. I love it. I love it. Oh, uh, give me a second outro of the stream, and then uh, I'll be right back.